Well, hello there. I'm Mike Creevy for Homeschool Connections, and with me today is Mr. Philip Campbell, Homeschool Connections instructor. Philip, thank you so much for stopping by today. You're very welcome. And this is exciting. I, I get to uh, chat with everybody here and just you know learn a little bit more uh, about you and your background and what brought you to Homeschool Connections, your courses, all that fun stuff in just a, a few short minutes here just to kind of familiarize everybody with you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your background? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I've always loved history, and I'm very happy that I wound up as a history teacher at Homeschool Connections. Um, I attended Ave Maria University and got my my bachelor's uh, in liberal arts with a major in European history. And then I went on to study education uh, at Madonna University and did five years there, got a certificate in secondary education, studied social studies, educational psychology, classroom management, everything to do with uh, with education. And then simultaneously, I was I was teaching at my local class co-op, um, doing my youth group at the church. So I've just kind of, my whole life has been devoted to uh, education and young people. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Wow. Yeah. And that's, and I see, of course, anybody who looks at your, your the course list, right? The course offerings that you teach at Homeschool Connections is a pretty wide array. You know, you, you probably have more of the uh, topics, right? You know, to, to cover than a lot of other folks do. So what are maybe some of your, your favorites, if you can... If you can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, I've, I'm one of the original teachers from Homeschool Connections. I started back in 2009, so I've built up a huge repertoire of, of classes, mainly in history. I do some uh, economics and other, I uh, do geography, logic, but 80% mm -hmm. of what I do is, is history for high school and middle school. I've got the whole gamut. You could do your whole history studies at HSC with me alone if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got... Oh, ancient history, four sec, four different U.S. history classes, three medieval history classes, all sorts of specialized regions like middle, modern Middle Eastern history, history mm. of Japan, history of Australia. So I have almost anything you could possibly need, and I'm adding to that collection every year. Sure. And, and your tan, I'm not super familiar with your, your uh, book series for tan, but is that, does that kind of parallel some of this? Because, you know, I imagine that uh, you know, the texts that you've been putting together in the courses, you know, there'd be a lot of dovetailing, I would imagine there. You would think, but uh, but I'm mainly a high school and upper middle school teacher and the texts are for elementary school. So okay. I don't personally use the texts in my classes, but uh, we do have a, a primary school um, uh, program through HSC that does use those texts for the lower grades. But sure. the books are kind of like at a lower level than what uh, the what I but but I do assign right. some of my other books for my high school classes. So I do dovetail gotcha. it wherever I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and so what in terms of within your class, uh, you know, an average student kind of jumping in there for uh, their, you know, maybe their first experience with you? What's what's your class like? What kinds of uh, approaches do you use kind of, you know, in the pedagogy of, of how you conduct that? Yeah, well, I, I set every class up so that anyone can jump in anywhere. There's there's never any prerequisites, um, so you can jump in wherever you'd like. It's very very traditional lecture focused. Um, I, I'd say I'd spend ninety five percent of the time lecturing, but I have lots mm -hmm. of very interesting powerpoints. I know how to make them colorful and illustrative and and uh, easy to look at and 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 very helpful. There's not tons of boring text to read. And I try to enliven sure. the discussion with lots of stories about these these times and people and events to try to put the, the story back in history. So it's not just like, hmm. blah, blah, blah. Here's a bunch of facts. Here's a bunch of dates. But try to uh, per present it as a narrative, you know, um, so that kids can really get engaged and understand what's going on. So I would say sure. be prepared for a lot of information to come at you, but in a very organized narrative way that's going to make sense. Sure. Yeah, that was I, my, my undergrad uh, personally was, was also in uh, in history, and for whatever reason, for me, I never really understood, quite frankly, how someone could be bored by it. You know, because it was always these these stories of of real people. And uh, I remember when I did my, I think it was my senior history thesis. Like the the folks that were evaluating them were uh, just kind of chuckling because they just said that they could really feel connected with this this figure. I was writing about John uh, Mosby in the Civil War, you know, Confederate oh, cool. partisan warfare and stuff. But they just said, yeah, they, I don't know. They said like felt like you knew him. I said, yeah, I know. I felt like that too sometimes. <laughs> so um, so for you, is there a particular uh, area that you like, you know, in terms of, of, of history, particular you know, time period that you really uh, get most excited to cover? Or is it all kind of the same for you? You know, I started out as a medievalist with a love of, of medieval history, and it still has a special place in my heart. But as I've expanded professionally and taught a lot of things, I've started to love every period equally, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know. It's like asking a chemist what his favorite chemical is. Like they're all probably just <laughs> in there, you know, <laughs> they're all the same. Or what's your favorite math function? I don't know. I, I just like all, all history and I feel equally happy in any period uh, teaching it. Sure. And, and you get, I mean, as, as far as from a Catholic perspective too, you know, I imagine you get perhaps a unique opportunity to, even if you're not specifically teaching, you know, church history, that you get those opportunities to explore. I, I imagine some of those uh, in, you know, really important contributions that, that folks in the church have made through history or challenges, you know, unique mm -hmm. challenges. It, all, it all ties in because our, our, our religion, it unfolds, you know, we have a, we have a saying that we, we call it salvation history, right? Our, mm -hmm. our redemption unfolds in history. And so the, uh, you know, the, the battle of the city of God and city of man is always unfolding in every epoch and every place. And there's always relevance. So that is an added layer of, of, uh, uh, of richness that I get to explore that I'm very grateful for. Sure. Well, and, I, and you mentioned geography too, because I, I think, you know, you obviously can't really separate that out that there's a, so much of it in any study of history, even things that people might not yeah. you know, think are immediately important. Do, do you uh, run into, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but is that a, is that a challenging you know, subject sometimes to approach or, or do you, you find the, the kids are interested in that? Um, I get a little bit of both. Some kids are mm -hmm. geography masters and they've studied very, uh, you know, they know very well where things are and other kids, they don't really know like sometimes. So I always am putting maps up with arrows being like, this is Peru, you know, like here's where it is and, and, and trying to show them, especially when you get down into, you know, very minute areas like this is the Crimea Peninsula or whatever. Sure. Um, so I do have a whole, I have two classes of geography a whole year. I do physical geography, which is like landforms and, and earth and weather. And then I do political geography, which is about the countries and culture mm -hmm. and whatnot. And be between the two, it's a whole year of high school geography you can take. And I think it balances well for any social studies related um, courses. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And again, like I, we're probably just going to direct people for sure to your instructor page, you know, to just dig in a lot deeper and see what else you have to offer. Is there anything else, you know, you'd want to share any other uh, ways? Yeah, that if folks anyone wants to you? get a, a comprehensive view of what I'm up to, if you visit my website, philipcampbell.net, I have a list of all my classes and a list of all my books and everything I've ever published is there. Um, so that's philipcampbell.net, not philipcampbell.com. That'll take you to the bass player for Motorhead. So you want to get, you want to go to philipcampbell.net, and you will you will get my my website. And if you're on social media, you can um, you can follow me at Philip Campbell Author Teacher on Facebook. Wonderful, and I, I've I've benefited from some of your YouTube videos as well. I, I was just watching the Arkansas and Kansas one. <laughs> it's, it's like I want to know that. Yeah, so that video well, has like fifty thousand views. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Philip, for stopping by today and sharing about your Homeschool Connections courses with us. You're very welcome, sir. Yep. God bless.